Greetings in Christ. My name is Bishop Nectarios, and I am a bishop of the Orthodox Patriarchate of Nations. Now, today's topic is going to be the way of a pilgrim, the Jesus prayer journey, annotated and explained. So, I bought this book because I originally began my investigation into the practice of hesychasm and the Jesus prayer as practiced by the Orthodox to see for myself what this prayer really was about and what kind of fruits would be born from its practice. And right off the bat, I realized that there were two books that are really very central to the practice of hesychasm. And the first which is in a four-volume series, is called the Philokalia. And the Philokalia is around 11 centuries of wisdom contained in four volumes on a variety of subjects, including the prayer of the heart, the unceasing interior prayer that Scripture teaches us about. Now, the way of a pilgrim is the story of a pilgrim in pre-communist Russia. And at this point in time, this was a fairly common practice for people to live without anything except for, usually they had a Bible, um, and they had a sack to put, you know, stale bread and crusts and things like that in. And they would live a very simple, humble life going from pilgrimage to pilgrimage. And they would, um, you know, they would pray and they would develop a very advanced spiritual life through... Uh, denying themselves and taking up the really the cross that Christ has told us about. So this book contains little hidden nuggets of wisdom about the Jesus prayer. It even contains a kind of itinerary for if you're just getting started, um, read these chapters in this order, and it'll become a lot easier to understand the rest of it. With the understanding that the practice of hesychasm is usually actually a fairly advanced spiritual practice, but it's also fairly common for um, people who are more in the beginning stages of their faith to take it up. And the repetitions can become dull and boring, uh, which is a, a part of the whole experience, the idea that you're going to be tested. But if you persevere with the Jesus prayer, and I'm only like almost a week and a half to two weeks into this, and I can see that there's an absolutely amazing effect that the Jesus prayer has on you. Now, this is a video that I've wanted to do for a little while, and it feels kind of nice to get this video out of the way, because my last video dealt with a very divisive topic, and just posting it, honestly, put me in a kind of, well, sour mood. The video was a topic about immigration, and I put forward a suggestion on a way we might be able to resolve that a topic that's dividing everyone. And um, whenever you have to discuss something that is so complicated, so challenging, so divisive, it can be a little draining on your soul. You do it because you love your people, and you want to see your country be the best it can possibly be. But that doesn't mean that you don't feel the sadness and the sorrow of addressing such a topic. So, this particular copy, getting back to the point, has little notations on the left side. And on the right side, they have the narratives of this pilgrim. And there are explanations of time, place, and culture. There are references to specific biblical passages. There are references to specific chapters in the Philokalia where you can read for yourself what the various saints of the church have written throughout the ages. And um, I find this book to be something that I really want to read again, and I want to take much more careful notes of these little nuggets that are hidden all over the book that contain pearls of wisdom and then make me want to go and look up the um, the fruits of that and see what it is that our forefathers thought and taught on various subjects. 
Um, one of my favorite things, aside from the fact that it includes the glossary, which just about every book does, is that it also contains a selection of other books that you can read inside of this book. And as I said, some of them are from the Philokalia, some of them are biblical passages, um, but there's a lot to that. The suggestions for further reading, you know, they include things about the Jesus prayer, the art of praying, etc., etc., so that you can take what's been introduced to you here and then expand upon that. Um, and the idea of anyone having such a simple and humble approach to God is absolutely refreshing. It is a beautiful thing that we could all learn from. I would recommend The Way of a Pilgrim, the four volumes of the Philokalia. I would also recommend Patience because this is a spiritual practice that can be, well, it's difficult for those who are just getting started to work on. I've been in ministry for years and I still find the Jesus prayer to be something that in the beginning I wasn't sure would have the kind of grace that it does possess. And the feeling I get from praying the Jesus prayer, I do a hundred repetitions of it daily, and then I do a hundred repetitions for people who are in need. And I find that the constant prayer, whether it's spoken prayer or whether it is internalized prayer, is something that you begin to miss when you're not engaged in it. Part of what you do with hesychiastic prayer, hesychasm, is you start to match it with your breathing. And many times you breathe in and you say the first half of the prayer, you breathe out, you say the second half of the prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And as you begin to link prayer with breathing, it starts to become almost subconscious. And this practice starts to take on a life of its own. And as you start to pray unceasingly, whether, of course, it's spoken or thought, this is a prayer that I recommend wholeheartedly. Yeah. One thing that I do want to point out is that the practice of hesychasm is entirely biblical and it is within the realm of holy and sacred tradition. The practice of hesychasm was examined by an ecumenical council of the undivided church. And they did this to simply ensure that the practice was Christian and not a interference from either another religion or a heretical teaching they wanted to make sure is this the real deal or is this a distraction so this is something that agrees with scripture this is something that agrees with sacred tradition this is something that agrees with the statutes of the church and it's practiced to a way lesser extent by the roman catholics and it's practiced to a much greater extent by the Orthodox. I recommend this prayer for you. Now, if you can't say a hundred repetitions a day, say ten. And then work your way up. Pay attention to how you feel while you're praying it. Pay attention to the progress that you make spiritually when you pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's a very simple prayer. And if you want to pray for someone else, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on, say the name of the person, the organization, the group, the number of people, whatever you need to pray for. And by their prayers, have mercy on me. And I really enjoy the humility of that because you're not calling them sinners. You're not judging them. You're just asking for God to take care of them, and by their prayers that you be taken care of also. We should pray for each other. We should pray for the world. We should pray for our elected leaders. We should pray for those in the church whose job it is to be our pastors. We should pray for those who have fallen out of the light of Christ. 
And we should pray for those people that are going through trials and tribulations of their own. There is always a reason to pray, and there's always always a reason to be grateful for the small gifts that we've been given. And I believe that if you start picking up this practice and engaging in this practice daily, you're going to see a massive, really increase in all ways, but a leap forward in your spiritual life. And again, it's not an overnight get rich quick thing. This takes dedication. This takes practice. You have to silence the distracting thoughts in your head. You need to simply be in prayer. You need to go somewhere where you're not likely to be disturbed, where you can set aside some time to pray to God. And the simple prayer is considered the most powerful of prayers because it invokes the name of our Lord and Savior. So, this book, The Way of a Pilgrim, is invaluable because it provides that introduction if you're seeking answers, if you're looking for guidance, and then it gives you ideas on how you can expand upon that, looking at far more complicated reading like the Philokalia or passages of scripture, so you can see where this comes from. Now, you can buy this online. I got mine from Amazon. And I really appreciated the annotations that were placed in here. This book is consisting of four, um, four narratives. And we see the kind of transformation that comes upon this person. Anyway, it's a beautiful book. I know you're going to love it. Get a copy of it. Read it for yourself. It's not a huge book. It is... Um, something that I think you'll benefit from tremendously. So if you're joining us for the first time, please hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, if you have any thoughts, if you have any ideas, feel free to put them forward. Uh, if you have any ideas for new videos, feel free to submit them. I'm always looking for new ideas. Now this channel really focuses on my faith as an Orthodox Christian, and there are subtopics for my, uh, my passion with the martial arts and my work with a charitable group called the Royal Lao Airborne. I would recommend that you watch some of the previous videos so you can see how I went for, from being an old Catholic to being received into the Orthodox Church, and um, we're just getting started. This is a work of love. And there are so many videos that I want to get a chance to make. We're going to be dropping them every Wednesday and Friday. I think the next couple weeks are already spoken for. And we're just getting started. I think week three is about to be filled. And I have a backlog of ideas that I want to put out. And we're not going to be just discussing the Jesus Prayer. We're going to be talking about aspects of church history. We're going to be talking about the lives of some of the saints. I want to do a video on St. Sava. And uh, my next book review is going to be a book called The Heart of a Bishop. Now, this is a book about a Roman Catholic bishop who was not a people person. And he was put in a position where um, having Christ-like gentleness is kind of important. And it, and it catalogs and explains the transformation that this bishop undergoes as he's mentored by more senior bishops and as the process of discipleship and spiritual fatherhood becomes apparent. And we see the transformation that comes through this servant of God. Now, again, this is based on a Roman Catholic church, so there are going to be some differences between the Orthodox and the Roman Catholics. However, this is a beautiful book. I can't wait to get more in depth on it. And um, until then, God loves you, and I love you. And I'll see you next time.